All right, guys, welcome back. Still working on this old truck. Got a uh, transmission transfer case here. Pulled into the garage and um, just about ready to start doing what we need to do. However, as is usually the case with these kinds of projects, it seems that it's two steps forward and one step back. I've hit a snag. I was um, looking at this transmission. I've got to do some work to this linkage. It's kind of stiff and in the process. Looking at it, I noticed that. That's not good. I've got a crack in the rear housing. So, uh, not wanting to pass a headache along to someone else, that's going to have to be addressed. I don't know if it goes any further than that. I can't really tell with a transfer case shifter in the way. So, that's going to have to be addressed. Um, got a real good welding shop. It's not far from here had them weld some cast for me in the past. In fact, they are right over there. You can almost see their place from here. So, I may um Saturday today, of course. I don't know that they're going to be around today. But I may go ahead and load that thing up in the truck. Plan to run it over there to them on Monday. Have them take a look at it. I'm hoping they say that they can weld that okay without stripping the whole thing down. I don't know why they couldn't. They shouldn't need to have access to the inside of that. Uh, they'll just get in there with a burr and open that crack up a little bit and take it up. That's all they gotta do. It's just that simple, right? Well, we'll see. <laughs> but at any rate, um, my plans of installing that transmission in the truck today have changed. So I guess I'll work on uh, buttoning up some engine details instead. They like that modified cross member. They modified that, I believe, to clear the shaft for the PTO that's on this transmission. The PTO unit on the side, which is pretty cool. Um, I think that's what they modified that for, is just allow clearance for the drive shaft for that PTO to go through. So that's why it looks kind of funny. But at any rate, um, that trans won't be going in today, unfortunately. Still plenty of other stuff I can work on. But I figured I would show you the snag, share the journey. I'll let you know what turns out. Well, what's up, guys? I'm back on this project here. Uh, I got derailed here for a few days, but um, we're back at it now. I um, spent one evening going to pick these guys up and do some woodworking. And I'd like to do some more woodworking. And I came across these guys on Facebook. Nice Colombian woodworking vices. Um, actually picked up all three of them for one money. Uh, they're missing the dogs that go in here, so I'll have to... Make some new dogs and get those put in, but uh, hopefully someday I will be afforded the opportunity to make myself a nice woodworking bench, and those, at least a couple of those, will find their way onto that bench. But uh, had to snap them up, the opportunity presented itself, and then uh, spent a little bit of time waiting on this. I got this guy back from my welder today.
patch that crack up for me. So hopefully we are in good shape there. It's above the oil line, so if there's a little pinhole or a little bit of porosity there, shouldn't really be a big deal. Um, I'm sure there is some oil that's moved around inside there, but uh, it's not like it's going to sit there and run out the bottom. So I think we're in good shape. I think we can go ahead and proceed with getting that transmission bolted into place, which is good because I'm about ready for fluids and batteries and try and fire this thing up. Uh, I've got all the fluids here. I've got the batteries. I've got an oil filter. I've actually got an air filter. I've got just about everything I need to put this thing together and see if it'll make smoke. So, um, thought about doing that without the transmission in it, just to see if we could get a, a first start, or at least a first start in a couple of years. It's been almost two years that that um, engine was in storage, so uh, it'll be a heck of a cold start when we fire this guy off. But uh, now that we've got the transmission here, I don't see any reason to start it with uh, a jack under the oil pan or to do any of that. We can go ahead and stab the transmission, bolt it into place, and then support things as they should be off the transmission mount. So that is kind of where we're at. I think I'm going to go ahead and um, get some things moved around here, get that thing onto the, you know, I guess get it under the truck first and then get it on the transmission jack and uh, see if we can stab that thing into place and keep this slow roll going in the right direction. So I'm going to get uh, some things moved around, get the jack out here, and get to work. Well, the jack is empty. That's a good sign. Roll under here and show you the progress. Transmission is bolted up, so we got to get that slave cylinder sorted. I'm going to have to do some work to um, get my cross member bolted in here. Uh, this truck does not have holes in the frame for the cross member that I have, so I'm going to have to come up with a different cross member or I'll have to drill some holes in the frame. Either way, it's not a terrible job, it's just one more little thing. It's always one more little thing, right? So at any rate, uh, that thing is stabbed. It's uh, bolted up, torqued down. Um, tip for you guys, if you've not done this before, when you go to stab the transmission, leave it in a gear. Um, don't leave it in neutral. And the reason for that is, as you're trying to get the splines of the input shaft lined up up in the front with the flywheel, you can get a hold of the output shaft and give it a twist. To move that shaft back and forth in order to get things lined up. Um, obviously it's in gear so I can't turn it now because I can't turn the engine by hand but uh, that'll be a tip that'll help you get things lined up, get things stabbed. Um, it's kind of frustrating. It can be kind of irritating rolling around here on your back underneath the truck unless you've got a lift. Um, even with a transmission jack it's just uh, takes a little time. It's a little frustrating. Uh, and just getting everything lined up perfectly and getting things to mesh like they should. But at any rate, it's stabbed. Uh, I'd like to get um, I'd like to get the cross member resolved, and then uh, I want to put some fluids and some batteries in this thing and see if we can bring it to life. So I may even delay the release of this video by a day or two if I have to, in order to do that. I really want to make this thing. Uh, We'll make it run. I'm going to share that. That'll be a big step forward. So that's it for now. Uh, I can smell cook supper cooking from here and uh, getting kind of hungry. So I think I'm going to go inside and eat and probably call it a night. So that's it for now. We'll be back later. All right, a little more progress. We've got batteries in here. Um, Hit a little bit of a snag here last night when I was working on this. You can probably see there's some 
coolants build here. I started filling the coolant system and for whatever reason I just started puking it out of the thermostat neck there. So I pulled that all apart and um, oddly enough there was no o-ring in the thermostat and I haven't had that apart since this engine was running. There was just barely a little bit maybe of a trace of um, silicone so apparently there was no thermostat um, gasket in there at all. That o-ring was not in there at all and there must have just been enough, just barely enough silicone on there to keep it from leaking. So, um, pulled that apart, got it cleaned up, got it dried out. Um, went down to uh, the auto parts department of the farm here and <laughs> pulled another thermostat neck off. Got myself a gasket, got that put together. I smeared it with a little bit of silicone uh, just to help that thing adhere. And I'm going to let that set up for a little while before I finish filling the coolant. Um, aside from that, uh, the batteries are in. Nothing is on fire yet. So that's a good sign. Um, I did turn the ignition on. I've got gauges. Uh, headlights work. Um, you know, we've got, uh, we're making some progress here. So I think the next thing in line is to get the transmission cross member bolted up. I'm going to use this old scab together one that was in it. Um, I don't know if this is the right one. I'm not sure why they modified it the way that they did. The only thing that I can figure is that um, it was modified for clearance to that PTO shaft. That's the only thing I can guess. Um, they do have it you know, below the frame rail here, whereas normal cross member would sit up on top on that side and then wrap the frame on the other side. So, um, I don't know. But that's the only uh, ZF5 cross member that I've got here. I brought up one of these other ones that I had that's actually the style that this frame is drilled for and it's just not going to work. It's just way too high. Um, I mean, you can imagine if I put this up on top of here, you know, we'd gain an inch and we don't have an inch of clearance to gain at the top. So it just has the transmission way too high. So I'm not going to use that. I guess I'm going to use this one. We'll drill some holes in the frame. Get this thing bolted into place. I've got to um, hook up a couple of fuel lines. Uh, one of the metal fuel lines on the engine was cut off at some point. It doesn't have the QD collar on it anymore. So I'll just use a piece of rubber hose there and uh, a couple of clamps. That's under suction, especially on these with the mechanical fuel pump. It's, it's at the motor, so that's under suction. It's not under pressure. There's really no pressure there. So as long as you've got a snug connection, rubber hoses are fine. Actually, truth be known, I've got a lot of rubber hose on uh, the kit on my truck. It's electric fuel. It's under pressure, and I haven't really had any trouble with it leaking. So I feel confident doing that. We'll get uh, fuel lines plumbed up here. Um, might stick the other half of the downpipe into place. And then uh, I think we're ready to see if this thing will fire up. I'd really like to hit that milestone here today if we could. You know, obviously we're not ready to take this thing out of the garage or even to drive it around the yard here yet. I've got slave cylinder dangling. I can't get the stupid push rod back into that thing. Um, they have a tendency to be a real booger once they've overextended like that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that pushed back together or if I'm going to have to replace it. So I've got that to contend with. I've uh, got this automatic shifter cable i got to take out. I've still got the automatic transmission wiring harness hanging down here. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here in the way that needs to be addressed. But, um, man, I just want to see this thing run. I really want to see it run. That would just be such a such a big step forward, such a milestone. So... That's what we're working towards. I'm going to get back to work here, and I'll bring you in here when we uh, hopefully are ready to turn the key and see what happens. All right, I think the time has come. I've got the fuel lines hooked up. Uh, I've got it topped off with coolant. Um, I've got the downpipe just kind of hanging loosely in place. And cinch anything down because I want to get a three inch band clamp to go on that two piece down pipe. 
Um, I've got ignition power when I switch the key on. I think I've got all the plugs and caps off of everything so that I don't ingest one of those. Fuel lines are good. Should be a little bit of fuel in the front tank. Um, sounds like everything works as it should when we hit the key, so uh, what do we say we give it a shot? So this will be uh, kind of a cold start. Um, this engine hasn't been run in about two years. It's got uh, 200 and now 372,000 miles on it. Um, that's not exactly what's shown on the odometer on this truck, but oh yeah, you see that? Somebody hooked me up. It's one of my subscri subscribers here, so you know who you are. Thank you, sincerely. Um, that's going to be a big help. That's going to... That was a tough one to find. But anyway, um, I don't know what it is. It's probably 35, 40 degrees out here today. Um, but this engine's been sitting in a crate down in the shed for about two years. So, um, it's got oil in it. It's got coolant in it. I've topped off the fluids. Uh, power steering's going to need some attention. I filled up the power steering reservoir only to watch it run out of a hole in the power steering cooler line and um, into a pan on the floor. So we'll have to do that yet. But if we can make some smoke with this thing, um, that will be an accomplishment for today. So what do you say we give it a shot? Glow plugs are working. Um, transmission is in gear, but there are no drive shafts in the truck, so we don't have too much to be concerned about there. Wheels are chalked. What do you say we give it a shot here and see what happens? making some smoke but it didn't fire so let's check make sure our glow plugs are working there's a video on how to diagnose your glow plugs I'll put a card in the corner here ah, the clamp on this test light is just ridiculous Appears I have no power to the glow plugs to either terminal. So what's that all about? Test light works. Okay, so I've got power there. The relay just dropped out. So let me go in and cycle the key. We'll check the other side of that relay. So we can probably tell also from the voltmeter here whether or not that relay is coming in. So if it ticks up as soon as the key comes on and then dips again, that tends to mean that that relay is engaged and that there's draw. So up, yeah, it didn't come down very far. It should be down well below that N if that relay is making connection. So, I'm guessing we're going to see power on one side. Actually, I'm not picking up power on either side. Okay, we got power there. Hmm. I don't have any power to the glow plug relay. 
All right, let me... I've got some cracking and sizzling going on over here. I wonder if I've got a loose connection here at the uh, starter relay. Let me check my connections here. I'll be right back. All right, I think we're ready to try again. I took those connections apart and cleaned everything up with some emery paper. And I think I've got power to both sides of the relay there now. And we're good there. And we're good there. So power on both sides means the relay is closed. Uh, let's try again. See what happens. Here we go. Starter's probably going to need a break here pretty soon, but let's try it again for just a couple seconds, see what happens. Alright, yeah, let's give it a break. We'll let it, uh, let that starter cool off for a few seconds, for a few minutes, and, um, we'll try again. It's making smoke. We're getting close. It almost fired there. We were real close. I'll let it cool down here. I don't want to burn the starter up and we'll try again here in a minute. All right. It's been about 10 minutes. I'll let that starter cool. I'm getting jittery. I want to get this thing running. I'm getting an adrenaline rush. Put the battery charger on it to maintain charge on the batteries. Topped off some fluids, fiddled with a few things, tightened that band clamp up just a little bit. Oh, let's try it again. Is this the time? Let's see. quite the time. Let it sit and cool off again. So when you're cranking these things, especially for a first start like this, um, if you've done injector work or anything like that, it takes a long time to get fuel pressure and oil pressure to all of the places that it needs it in order to run. So be patient, take your time, let it sit. Um, you don't want to burn your starter up, that's an expensive mistake. So. Um, take your time, crank for about 20 to 30 seconds, and then let it sit and cool off for about 10 minutes. So we'll go for another turn here. I'll keep piddling with little things while we wait, and we'll try it again. All right, it's been a few minutes again. Let's give this thing a shot and see what happens. I did a voltage drop test on the glow plug relay, and it's in the millivolts. So the relay is working as it should be. I'm getting good voltage to the glow plugs. Here we go. Let's try it again. That headlight bother you? That flickering? All right, here we go.
like the exhaust back pressure valve works. have it it's alive <laughs> oh that's awesome all right let's uh, try one more thing here I'll disconnect my little trigger switch reconnect the ignition on these starter relays that's what this small wire is that's the power from the switch that brings the relay in so when you use Something like this, all this does is it's just a jumper between these two clips. If I just jump battery voltage to that small terminal, that pulls in the relay. So let's um, reconnect the ignition. Let's see if I can start it from the key here. I don't know if all the safety interlocks and things are going to work like they should. Let's see here. Yeah, now we got something... Something's not happy. It's probably um, something to do with the clutch interlock or the um, neutral safety switch. So it's not going to start off the key that way. But um, it's alive, boys. All right, one more time. Just, just, just one more time. Just, just a little bit. Ready? Back pressure valve is noisy. Oh, that's an accomplishment for today. That's a huge step ahead. So, got a lot of little details left to do. We've got drive shafts that have got to go in here. We've got air intake. I've got to get the fan and the shroud in here. We're going to do full fluid changes in this thing. Um, there's a lot left to do, but that is a huge step ahead. So, Thanks for watching this video. I realize it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy one. Um, thanks for sticking with us until the end here. If this is a project that you are enjoying, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, YouTube tells me that only about 5% of the people that watch these videos are subscribers, which is kind of amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got a lot left to do yet. This truck is going to get um, probably a flatbed on here with uh, a little bit of stack action. We'll get this thing cleaned up and road ready, and um, we'll get it going. So, thanks for watching. It's alive!